Hey, what's going on my friends and welcome to this YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to tell you what you should be focusing on primarily if you're just starting out creating your online business. Whether you want to be an online coach or a tarot reader or sell cool, you know, energy charge jewelry, whatever it is, whatever your passion is. And you have this sense like, I feel a calling to do this, to, 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 for one, leave my career that's draining me, it's not creatively satisfying, I hate it, pays the bills, but that's about it, and do this thing I love. And as you start to even entertain this idea, you realize, especially if you do some research, how overwhelming it can seem. There's so much to do. Websites, niches, logos, what do I do? How do I actually make money online? What does this look like? Ooh, all this stuff. There's all these details that the mind can get lost in for days. And then suddenly, this endeavor that originated from just a spark of divine inspiration, creative inspiration, is turned into this heady, stressful, miserable thing that you don't even want to like, you don't even want to mess with it. <clears throat> So I want to make it simple for you and tell you that I've done that. I've built in my own way what you all want to build, a lifestyle of freedom founded upon my dearest passion. You can do it. And having done it, I now can look back and say, ah, this is what I should have been focusing on all along, at least for a while in the beginning. I'm going to tell you what it is in a second. I'm going to tell you a quick little story that happened to me a few days ago that's going to really, uh, really emphasize this one thing you all should be focusing on right now. So anyway, I was leaving Starbucks in my car, in my little espresso, and there's this older woman with like long gray hair, huge glasses, standing in the middle of the freaking road on a phone. And I, to the point where I couldn't, I could I would have hit her. I couldn't get around her. I had to stop. And once I stopped to kind of give her a look like, what are you doing? You're blocking the road, lady. She like, she kind of like walked over and kind of waved like this at me. Where I rolled down my window and I saw, I wanted to see what was going on. <clears throat> Come to find that she, her car stalled. And she said, can you jump my car? Now, I'm not the go-to person to jump cars, but I said, well, if you have jumper cables, I can try. I'm not your guy, but I'll do my best. I figured it out, I googled it. <laughs> I'm very like naive in that sort of area of my life. And anyway, her battery was, it was completely dead. We tried calling this tow truck company. But the problem was, this woman was so shook up from feeling stranded. She was probably in her 80s, I would have to guess. And she was just, she couldn't remember simple things. She, could, she didn't even know her own phone number as an example. And we are both on the phone with multiple tow truck companies baking in the hot freaking sun for like an hour and a half. It took us an eternity to figure all this out. There was a street cleaner that kept going by so we couldn't even hear. One of the, one of the, the tow truck companies we were talking to, they were having storms. And we'd be like three quarters of the way getting done, giving them all this information. And then they would cut out because the freaking storm cut out their power and we'd have to start over. And it was just this huge, headache, pain in the ass thing, and about, I don't know, two thirds of it, I was like thinking, I just, what the hell did I get myself into? <clears throat> I just want to wrap this up. You no, know, and I was feeling irritated. I was feeling inconvenienced. And eventually we got it sorted out. We got this company coming. And this lady was so grateful. She said, so many people I tried to have help me. And they said, they're busy. They have to get to work. And she's like, I can't, she just was so blown away that I took the time out of my day to help her. Now, I'm not saying that to brag. I was resistant. I was sort of kicking and screaming on the inside, not wanting to do that. But after that, I walked away feeling like a hero. I felt so good, so like filled up on natural goodness, the best way I would put it. I felt like a natural high on love and life. And re I realized this is all I need. A nice deed for a human being, even if it inconveniences me for an hour and a half and gives me sunburn, 
I, I was sailing all day. Now I tell you this because that is all you need to focus on in the beginning. That genuine desire to help, uplift, inspire, educate, heal, can be felt from other people. And there's so many people on YouTube writing blogs and doing all this content creation to get followers, to get recognized, to get a sense of significance, to make money. And a lot of the content those folks produce is still good. It's quality. But there's an underlying tone of genuineness that is what's really magnetizing. And people will just be fond of you because you're being yourself, because you're being genuine. And I promise you, when you have that pure intention to help, you'll get the million dollar downloads at some point. You'll get the growth, the traction, the synchronicity. You'll align yourself with the right book, mentor, teacher, course, whatever it is. You'll, you'll really become in harmony with the cosmos, if you will, and you will succeed. And the beautiful thing is you don't need to succeed to enjoy doing what you felt guided to do in the first place anyways. I didn't make it, I didn't gain anything from helping this woman, but I succeeded. Because I felt amazing. I felt it was just the right thing to do. My heart knew it and I did it. And so she would have paid me money. I, it, it would have seemed so insignificant compared to how I felt on the inside. And so often, our journey starts off with that energy. And that's why you feel confident. That's why you feel it's possible when you're getting those inspirations. I need to write a book. I need to do this. And then it's like when it comes time to do it, that, that why, that big original reason, core reason why we started in the first place gets thrown by the wayside and we're lost in like, what should my business LLC be? What should my domain name be? Should I have a sales page? What's my niche? I don't know my niche, goddamn. Uh, and then it's like, and then it becomes this machine structure-y, heady, mind-contained, unpleasant energy to mingle with. And some of that, most of that's necessary, but when you stay grounded, in your focus, those things will flow more naturally and more synchronistically for you. And you'll literally be guided to what really matters and what's relevant at the time. And it won't be such a heady, arduous process. Okay? So a lot of you might now might be, feel flustered, might feel lost, might feel like given up. I promise you, if you just step away. Try to remember as best you can why you started this in the first place and tap back into that purity, a creative purity, that longing to help and serve. I promise you, not only will you succeed much faster, but you can keep your values and priorities in check and you can enjoy the journey most of the way. There are some ups and downs, of course, but you can enjoy the journey from the get-go. Hope that helps you, my friends. Much love to you all. Peace.